We do indeed. And the draft starting off Tornado, not Sharknado. Excuse me, I'm not going to read the top of the, do the draft no, screen. do that. <laughs> yep. Uh, starting off with the Rhaegar band, EG going to be starting off with Illidan. Yep. So, I mean, we, we've talked about this. You don't see Rhaegar bands like ever in the EU side of things, but in NA, he is basically number one healer right now. Fair enough. And speaking of number one healers, Sharknado responding to the fact the that uh, they banned out no what appears to be in NA as the best healer by picking another great healer in the form of Ufa. EG, though, going to be going for some pretty staple picks I'm we've seen tonight to in the form of Jaina and Taranda. So Taranda to support with that Jaina, this could lead into a roam comp from Evil Geniuses. They are known to do that in the early game penchant for damage that Jaina can output is, is fairly significant uh, overall. So going with the Jaina first pick, that's also a very Evil Geniuses kind of thing. Evil Geniuses loves Jaina. They started playing her Patches ago, last meta, she was still very high up on the pick list there from Evil Geniuses, and I'm not surprised at all to see her sneak through the bands and get the first pick potential from EG. Sharknado, mm -hmm. Tornado, actually, hey. with, that, yeah, with the Uther, <laughs> that's very likely to go to Nick. He's very comfortable on the Uther, change is not withheld, and it uh, looks like they're going to be pairing that up with the Vala, so they're going to build ready. up their backline first, but what could come next for Tornado with an Illidan ban on the table? Um, hmm, well, after already taking the Valor, Warriors are still yet to be picked, so it's likely going to be them grabbing first pick on Warrior, which is more than likely going to be ETC or Diablo, whichever the one they feel works better with their composition. And there is, in fact, the ETC going to be brought out by Tornado. I apparently did not mute the game sound from last game. I do apologize for anybody right, right. very confused with the background music. That is um, <laughs> definitely not what I intended. So my apologies there, Mr. Toucher. But yeah, with the ETC, Tornado get themselves... We've seen this again. ETC and Uther. Have they ah, actually been split death. apart in our games today? I don't believe so. They do have just the effect, ridiculously effective combo of the chain CC, the chain stun. So, uh, yeah, don't see any reason to separate them. And uh, we have seen Valor in the, that particular composition once, but uh, she's been darting around a bit. EG bringing in the Zagara, once again going for them this huge range damage. Deals. Yeah, Zagara is for sure a favored uh, ranged DPS option. And at this point, to go with the Jaina, I mean, early game lane presence. I, I suspect we won't see Jaina in a lane. She'll probably be roaming around, but we'll have to see what else EG is going to bring to it. But putting a Zagar into the top or putting her into the party lane, like she can just really do a, a versatile amount of things there early in the game. And having Evil Geniuses pick it up is not really too much of a surprise. The Maw can absolutely do wonders on some of these tight corners, these small uh, corridors in and around the jungle areas. But now here's a pick that perhaps I'm a little caught off guard with. Right wing to be the EG healer. Brightwing is still an absurdly solid healer when it comes to just the amount of healing she does due to the fact it is still her passive. She took a... The fact that she had rewind removed from her kit a couple patches back is what mainly saw her drop out of favor. Ooh, I'm going to completely change the tact here because <laughs> Tornado are bringing in the Lost Vikings. From order. <laughs> Not only do justice. we get a task start on that, but the Lost Vikings to join us time? here on stream. You know... Fnatic Shinobu this morning had a phenomenal run with the Vikings. Last night, ESL Majors had a lot of Viking play as well from Cloud9. It's it, This is um, a pick that is becoming more and more high, uh, higher up on that uh, tier pick list as patches go on, man. Yeah, last week, El Nexo, in fact, were also running it. We saw Vortex running it with all three Vikings grouped together in the top lane and didn't die once, did a fantastic job in last week's uh, go for on the EU side. So like you said, it's making its way in that by far the hardest hero in the game to play is starting to shuffle its way into the meta and it is great. Absolutely. The last pick here from Evil Geniuses is uh, their favorite Diablo. So there we go. Double support, the tank and the double DPS in the back for EG. But uh, a little bit more of a varied mix from Tornado. I mean, they locked things down with the Uther. They got the ETC for the front line. But now in the back, the Healing Ward and the Archon to come out from Tastar. Pure damage uh, from uh, the Tornado Vala. Very likely still a multi-shot variety. And now Viking Boat coming into the mix here as well. We, we are going to Cursed Hollow. 
we could see poke and soak uh, early game tactics from Tornado using those uh, Viking advantage. Very much so. Viking's very effective with the whole stick one in each lane and see the four man roaming gank comp is what we've seen from a couple teams. I believe uh, I believe there was actually Tempo Storm that did that one of the, as one of the first teams. Were they one of the first? Well, they're definitely one of the teams. To, to do it. I mean, how many times have you seen Vikings pre-patch? Uh, pre this patch? No, uh, sorry, pre, pre last one. So uh, when Thrall, not Thrall, when Vikings were introduced, they weren't really high up on the list. But by the end of that, no, that patch true. meta, a lot of people actually started doing it. In fact, we saw bans on Vikings repeatedly uh, by the end never of that, that patch meta. Never saw that in EU. That never happened here. <laughs> oh, man, we have so many players now known over the NA side of things just for their Vikings play. I mean, if you don't get Vikings, they lost. If they did, they won. That's almost how binary the pick wow. became. Yeah. Isn't that's it? Pretty old. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> that sounds amazing. But yeah, this is going to be quite an interesting game. Not just for the fact that we do have the Vikings, like we said, but the issue with the fact that they are running the Vikings is the sheer amount of AoE damage that is coming in from Evil Genius. Is Jaina, everything she has other than her Lance is AoE. Countdown has begun. We're going to be heading into the game. Brightwing, Emerald Wind can really mess up a Vikings if you can split them up to get them out of range of longboating each other and then pick a couple off. Zagara, more of the preferring a people are grouped up, but she can do the huge AoE damage with that more and obviously Baneling Splash. And, once, and finally, there's Starfall coming over in Tarande. Can be very good at picking up Vikings due to their low health pool. Oh, man, oh, man. Like, it, just the way that you said Baneling Splash kind of just made me chuckle a little bit. I don't know why. I guess I've never heard of Baneling <laughs> Splash before in a, in a theory craft. <laughs> <laughs> man, those Banelings, those Splashers were so good. No, it, it just it's so happen. much Splash damage. <laughs> <laughs> the boys and girls in blue, ladies and gentlemen. It will be Evil Geniuses, Faye representing the top, Idra, Cotham Lux, ZP is holding down the mid, and right now it's going to be Mad Timmy, Five, Mad Heels four, on the bright wing three, into the bottom lane. I guess they have one, not really settled on a Heels yet. Well, but speaking of the Heels, I can tell you, Nick Hotz has had the pleasure and the misfortune of playing uh, not only for EG, but now against, and here he is with his own team going against them with Tornado. Yep, he is going to be running on the Ufa. LZ running on the Tassadar. Zuna is playing the Lost Vikings. Heading up to the top plane, it is going to be Caterpillar on the ETC. And I believe I called everyone, unless I missed someone. Uh, nope. Well, I, I called you, Nick. So <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, Ke Kenma on the Valor. Yeah, so you guys might be saying, like, Zuna? Cloud9 Zuna? Yeah, same Zuna. <laughs> He's on a little bit of a break, is my understanding. And here he is just kind of playing around for fun. This is more or less the same team that went into the TL Open last weekend. And they absolutely dominated. I don't think they lost a single match. So uh, wow. they they replaced somebody with Zuna. I don't know who, but they did. And uh, there he is, because I don't actually remember the full lineup from last weekend but as, uh, as substitutes and replacements go zuda's a pretty good one over there goes uh, viking there oh, goes wow. another viking i totally didn't catch that all right that's it that's enough theory right crafting there. about giraffes and all that <laughs> uh as i did mention a little bit earlier though you know idra and crew with the Jaina very likely into a roaming comp and so far they, they've done that i mean zps was holding down the mid cotton luck came in there with idra now we're rotating top lz uh, is Olaf's doing this, this top is olaf actually gone he is it was <laughs> just really putting it to zuna yes zuna seems to be struggling a bit with it multitasking already already on three deaths four deaths <laughs> one and a quarter deaths good sir yes it, they are split into quarters but that is already one death well, we can now officially call it EG getting first blood, <laughs> finally getting a kill on the board. And man, it's weird to see that all four Vikings actually totaled the first kill. That's uh, that's <laughs> something to see. But ZPs goes in with the charge, the overpower. The stun did not quite connect from Coffin Luck, I want to say. Uh, just a little bit too far back. And, you know, that was that was a little bit of a stretch. Anyways, I mean, we got the Uther and the Tassadar there. I don't think you can really burst that out, not with the level of damage up in that top lane. So either way, they're going to be trying to help out Faye. Faye, you see, no creeps, no tumors, no creep at all, Tetris. 
that is quite interesting considering that she has taken the increased mana re the increased health regen while on creep but the thing is the creep will just get cleared up almost instantly by the multi-shot and the side storms out of lz and kemba so it could be considered a waste of mana just using it for vision at the moment uh, yeah, does that if... work i thought that was bugged the vision yeah i thought uh or i thought oracle didn't reveal creep tumors at the moment because of a bug it definitely should <laughs> it should, but I'm not sure it does. I, saw a post I haven't on Reddit played Tessica this match, or this patch. Leave so. <laughs> I saw I, put, I saw a post on Reddit. It may have been fixed. It may have not even been a thing at all. Well, just before the first tribute, we do got the Stone Bros now going to be marching down the top lane. Idra has been keeping these uh, these Vikings fairly in the bag. Oh, Idra actually could be a little bit caught out here. That's going to be the punching arrow from Kenna, but it's not going to be any kind of big follow-up. We have the party bush from ZP's and crew, but uh, everybody except the Vikings themselves are coming down to this bottom tribute spawn. So Tornado is, is really heavily wanting to contest this as apparently Faye kills out Olaf in the middle. Yeah, Vikings definitely providing a little bit of an XP farm for EG at the moment. EG have control of this tribute area, and it looks like Mad Timmy will be able to get a nice shadow charge there, and then knock back Kemba, make sure there's no multi-shot going out. As the range increase on multi-shot was taken, might have been able to deny it, but Faye! ZP is saying no. They nearly so got Tuna on that, on, that, <laughs> I saw. on that rotation. My gosh, I mean, that would have been an amazing kill on top of Eric, but, you know, even with that Viking soak, there's no experience advantage generated here from Tornado as of yet. We do got Baylog into the top. Here comes Faye. She should be able to start setting up some of those creep tumors now, but they, she also now has to deal with spin to win at the level four talent for the Vikings. They're about to hit seven. They should see jump, but this is just not a Faye creep match. I mean, at all. Her, creeps have, her, her creep tumors have not lasted whatsoever. Not really, they are being cleared up very nicely. Like, just seeing one there, instantly getting wiped out. But now, though, EG going to be grabbing their own Bruiser camp, get some pressure on that mid lane, make it even harder for Zuna on these Vikings. He's regrouped them, giving back that top lane to the tri lane. But, uh, immediately, Idra going to be taking some harassment here from the Vikings. He's having to run away and has been pushed out of lane. Zuna finally starting to hit his stride here, at least against Idra pushing him back. Well, Idra, uh, by default with Jaina, I mean, you don't have a very big health point, uh, hit point pool. I mean, there's no armor in this game whatsoever. So her damage reduction is limited at best. So go, you know, dashing forward with the Vikings, getting off the triple spin to wins, that will chunk her down. And even if she gets a quarter kill out of it, I mean, she's gonna be forced out of the lane anyway. So it's, uh, it's a very aggressive move from Zuna, but definitely well within his uh, capabilities you say he's starting to come into that own we do got tornado setting up for this tribute they want to try to make sure they can put it in their pocket zp's just used the fire so he's not gonna be able to interrupt it instead it will be a tyranda shot instead in fact going to be a zagara uh, roach to deny there they being careful where she goes she sends out sent out the hunter killer onto zp onto lz but lz Easy able to block all of that damage. Right wing just hanging in the bottom lane for now with Zuna, but the difference is right wing can teleport up, whereas Zuna can't. Zuna, though, using the rest of the Vikings, down goes ETC. The other two Vikings were harassing onto Idra there, but now they're pretty much alone, so they're going to have to back up here and play it a bit safer. But EG starting to gain control of the shrine area, and it looks like Corfin is going to be finally be the one taking it. Kenma being held back by his ETC, trying to get in, uses multi shot on Faye instead to try and get the kill, but Faye able to back out and Kemma having to vault away. Absolutely. So two tributes now into the pockets of EG. I have confirmation from chat. Uh, thank you, Kotank, that the Tassadar cannot actually see those group teams. So it's just side storms and multi shots and Zuna going down once more with Baylog. It's going to be the big target. How many Viking kills have we got now? <laughs> Let's have a look, shall we? Uh, that would one. be one control and a half. two. Yes, control two. One and a half so far. So that's quite a lot of Viking deaths. That's six Viking deaths. <laughs> In that six minutes. Viking <laughs> <laughs> One Viking death a minute. More or less, yeah. <laughs> you can see the experience up. advantage that Evil Geniuses has cultivated for themselves, even against the soaking advantage that the Vikings do provide. It's about a half level, and it's not quite the full level that they were hoping, but either way, heroics for both teams come out. And what do we see, Tetra? We see a Divine Shield once again coming back in from the Ufa here. Longboat Raid is coming in from the Vikings. The damage it offers is just too good to yeah, miss. Man. Strafe coming in from the Valor. Just going to try and burst down some characters here. There's not a huge amount of CC outside of Diablo and the Polymorph. 
on the side of EG. So it's possible as long as they can dodge. In fact, no, pretty much everyone has CC. What am I talking about? But a lot of it's quite easy to dodge, to be fair. Lightning Breath coming in from Diablo, just a huge amount of damage over time. Link Heal coming in from the Bright Wing, which is nice. Got to give your team some sustain somehow. In comes ZPs onto LZ. LZ does have Dimension Shift and he does use it to dodge the Ice In comes the Stage Dive Strafe as well. Right behind ZPs is Lightning Breath versus Strafe Kimber for some reason going through the Lightning Breath. And ZP is now just turning around. He's having to back out, though. In comes Zuda with the Longboat. Longboat does get killed off, but turns around onto Idra. Idra having to back out, and he does escape on very low health. Currently, no one has died yet. They're still continuing to go. We're finally going to see a death. It looks like it was going to be Nick. No, Nick escapes. And now we're seeing Caterpillar also on the run. The Vikings trying to chase down Corford Luck, but they're not going to get him. They're going to retreat. And the only person who died in that entire battle so far was Balog. Yeah, I think Zuna is the best Sorry, one the other two. Oh, yeah, there goes finally the, good There goes the it, Eric. Then. There goes the Balog. I mean, as you said, he was trying to chase down Corford Luck. Could not quite grab it. Caterpillar still goes right back into the thick of things, though. They're still battling over this tribute. Absolutely, we do not want to get cursed here, but here comes the stun. Cotton Luck back in business is going to put Battle Cow a bit more on the back foot, but by the end of it all, it will only be those Vikings going down and three for three tributes go right into the pocket of Evil Geniuses as they rotate into the bottom, perhaps going to try to seal the deal with the fort. That is indeed what they're going to do, just pushing as hard as they can just going to try and kill this off. And there's very little the Tornado can do here, having to play it very far back as it is, as Kenma is the only one here. Everyone else is doing their own thing. Zuma is holding back the mid lane, making sure they don't lose too much there. Caterpillar pushing the mid, the top lane, just trying to prevent that fort from going down with the help of his Echo Pedal Talent. Bottom fort does go down, so we are seeing Tornado grabbing their Stone Bros, being back for health, and then they will head to the mid lane to prevent that going down too. Yeah, the Stone Bros are just going to act as a health buffer for that bottom lane, so we shouldn't see any kind of big keep damage going up. But uh, we do got the rotation into the mid. Zuna too far forward with those Vikings. Loses out the Olaf. We still have the EDC into the top with 10 seconds left on this curse. Looks like the top fort will survive mid here as well with the gathering from Tornado. But they are down a talent tier. It's very hard to go into that oh, fight, especially okay. a Viking down. And the end of the curse will come, and so will that fort. It will be uh, dead and dusted, Mr. Tetcher, as it looks like EG will now recoup and perhaps go for Bruisers or Boss. I would expect Boss. They have a talent advantage. They've pushed most of the lanes back, so now would be a good time to go for Boss if they were going to. Looks like they're not going to play it a bit more cautiously, just spreading out, getting their lanes as they feel necessary. I don't know. Now they're going to turn around onto it, just making sure that there wasn't anyone hiding waiting to gank them for it. They're going to turn around. Like I said, they have the talent advantage. We are seeing the sprint from this Tarande, but getting a much more safe build. Tornado, though, going for their own boss as well to try and get the counter pressure on. And this is something that Tornado can do. While rolling the Vikings, they can actually push other lanes while the bike with the Vikings to get the XP while grabbing their own boss as well. Yep, so the soak is actually going to come out really strong there. Kenma into the top lane is going to start clearing the way for this boss. Bosses from both sides are now going to be barreling down their lanes. And this, uh, in terms of a race, EG will, will significantly come out ahead because they've already taken out the fort, and now they can start working away on this gate keep, or this keep gate, and then the keep itself. And uh, Tornado know that. They are not going to race this whatsoever. They're just going to let that boss do its work into the top, and they're going to put on a full-fledged defense here against EG. Yep, and that boss will be able to take down the top four, definitely. So they're going to get the XP from this no matter what. So like you said, playing fully defensively. Need to make sure you don't coin that Golem Stun Zuna. EDC, the only one not here. He was just dealing with the split push from Brightwing, but it looks like he's probably going to come down and join his team eventually. Brightwing has already come down. ZP being dropped very low. In comes the stage dive. Lightning Breath already being used. ZP being dropped low. We saw, I think, one of the Vikings go. No, they're all alive, in fact. Uh, not for long. Oh, okay. Well, the well, stone's been left here. Oops. We'll ignore that. <laughs> Zuna on the run. It is just Eric left from the Vikings here, but we're going to see some other deaths. Nice divide shield out of Nick. Will it allow him to escape? Timer is up on it. He gets the heal, he gets the shield, and he cleanses out the slow. So he is going to be able to get out unless he stays here for too long. So only people who died in that were two Vikings. That's not terrible. Olaf has respawned in the battlefield. He is uh, unfortunately going to be fouled by Faye. Oh, out. able to <laughs> escape. <laughs> wow. Just being in time, the teleport happened. Gets hit, though, on the way back to base, but 
it didn't cancel his back animation, so it doesn't matter. Nick actually managed to sneak up to this tribute, and he is going to get it before anyone arrives. Nope, ow, going to come in and deny that. And that okay. will give ZP enough time to shadow charge his way in. And now Nick has to be very careful. Call from luck with the stun. There's the cleanse. Nick will be able to get out. But he has bought his team enough time to start reacting as well. And we're actually seeing them go for the Bruiser camp as well as deny this tribute. They're playing the, the wait and deny game so they can grab this Bruiser camp as well. Look at the experience difference now. Virtually non-existent. Uh, the Vikings yeah. with the soak has uh, you know started to really bring this back into the tornado favor. They're no longer nearly as down as they were. But during all that, remember, there was a golem top lane. It went all the way through the gate onto about a quarter of the keep's hit points there as well. The Vikings wow. on the back of the fight were in two separate lanes despite you know whatever deaths that they did have. OLZ. They are only worth that quarter, Mr. Tetcher. So you know, in terms of a fight, we still cannot actually fight this tribute. We don't have 16 for Tornado. They know it. They're backing off. ZPs is looking for there a pick and grab a kill, but now they can turn the tables and they're going right back into it. They're going to lose the tribute though. Just not in time, Nick. With the Holy Radiance, just out of time. For now though, both teams looking for their act, looking for someone to pick anyone out of position. Vikings continuing to move together, having a look at some of their talents, as that is some of the most interesting ones. We see Impatience of the Virtue, which means enemies damaged by Vikings reduce the respawn cool, reduce the cooldowns of all the Vikings, which is pretty effective. As well, their Vikings, they do get picked off now and again. And the Norse Force running all of the Viking specific abil abilities in this run. Well, I mean, passives are great and all, but very very situational. I mean, you really have to be far ahead if you're going to go for the passive route. And, you know, when you have more abilities available to you, you can make more things happen. You can play more defensively, more aggressively. You just have so many other avenues to make things work. So, you know, it's, it's a very common build these days. I don't really see too much variation out of it. Sometimes uh, you'll see the 64 kilobit marathon out of the level 16 instead of Norse Force, but it's few and far between. Yep, this is true. We are going to see the uh, Zuna playing pretty far back at the moment. He does not want these Vikings to get caught up. Valor currently clearing the mid lane while this tribute is spawning. She's going to want to come down here and join her team very shortly. She does look like she's uh, making her way down, taking a bit of a long route. Manages to dodge Sentinel though. LZ currently trying to be the one who denies here, but having to pop Dimensional Shift to make sure he doesn't get hit by Blizzard too badly. Are right, able to deny though, in comes the stage dive. Zuda just charging through all of this onto Idra. He's trying to focus him down. Lightning Breath onto LZ, but LZ tanks all of it. Zuna also able to escape here, but he's gonna lose at least one of them. No, last second Longboat is now gonna turn around this fight so he can try and do some damage, but he's on his own here. Finally, in comes Caterpillar and Nick. And trying to do some damage. Faye in the back, you can see if he can snipe anyone off. LZ Gamer taking a bit of damage. And he is going to survive. He's taking a lot of Hunter Killer damage, but he's going to be able to Dimensional Shift out and get his health back that way. Kemba dropping some harassment. Neither team grabbing the tribute. Neither team losing a player. Azuna, the only one who was close to dying, able to survive thanks to that longboat raid. And it's now getting the health oh. regen back. And wow, there is a tribute going over to Tornado. Azuna, nice leap there, but he's still going to lose to Vikings. Eric is going to be able to get out, but Olaf does go down. Kemba. Luna Flare does land onto him, but going to be able to back out. The double support nature of not only the Bright Wing, but the heals from uh, the, the Taronda, the healing ward uh, from the level four talent on the Taronda there as well. It's really hard to burst somebody down. I mean, the big target there was ZP. ZP is built to take that damage. And as you can see, he's already backed to nearly full, not only in the back of his healers, but his own passive healing as well. Bay has her uh, rapid incubation as well. I mean, it's really hard to get kills. In fact, it's so hard that we don't have any yet from Tornado. Zero kills still on the board for them. So they might have done a really good job bringing back their experience. They're on par for the levels, for the experience, for the talent tiers. They now have to deal with a boss pushing top. At the same time, EG has to deal with this new boss coming into their top. But no kills, man. Like, you got to be feeling something bad about that. Yeah, I would definitely agree. However, I will say that Tornado are slowly making their way in the right direction due to the fact that they are dying less. <laughs> They're slowly starting to die less, and dying less eventually turns into not dying at all, which eventually turns into getting a kill. They're making their way there slowly. Okay, there's no way that's right. We have four <laughs> labeled deaths on the Vikings. 16 yeah. Viking deaths in 17 that's minutes? 
Well, they've been sniped pretty hard in pretty much every fight. We've lost at least two Vikings right, no, no, almost every to, time. I have to point this out. The only other death in this game other than 16 Vikings oh God, is yes. Vala. <laughs> This uh, no, it is the CTC. You're right. Sorry. My bad. I was looking at the wrong <laughs> table. But I'm looking at the right table of information. You are. You are 100% correct. All of the kills have been on the Lost Vikings. I can't help but wonder how this game would be going if he'd run something maybe a little bit tankier. <laughs> it's it's like murky. Weird to think that despite all these kills, it still only equals to five overall in 17 minutes. Yeah, it's that, the, that is incredible. It's been 16 picks that adds up to five kills. That is ridiculous. And the thing is, Zuna's more than made up for it in terms of just how much XP he's getting and the fact that he's been he's got almost 10 times Tassadar's XP in this game. Sorry, not 10 times, almost double Tassadar's XP in this game. And he's doing a really good job of zoning Itra. He's been times. focusing him down very hard. And yeah, 10 times, what a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the top keep lives, the bottom keep didn't, as I realized we didn't actually even look at any of the goals. <laughs> mm -hmm. Next tribute's coming up, and this could be the second curse for EG. They're level 20 to boot, Tetcher. They're rolling into it, LZ gonna try and deny, and he does get the storm off, he's Ooh. trying to dodge ZP, but there, go there goes. Look at the level the 20 talents, Tetcher. Oh my god. Triple Storm Shield, double Bolt of the Storm. My I god. love it. Storm Shield does... Does Storm Shield stack? Um, yes. We're about to find out. I want to say <laughs> yes. You can stack I, I, shields. I don't know if you can stack the same talented shield. I, I don't know. We'll have to find out. I assume yes. In which case, that's epic. ZP continuing to push back LZ, making sure that they can guarantee that tribute. I lo I'm liking the use of the scouting drone here out of Mad Timmy. He took it as his level one talent, which is a bit interesting in general, but he's been making really good use of it in terms of vision. Yeah, we didn't really talk too much about it. I've seen it a lot here on the stream. I'm, I always kept meaning to bring it up, but uh, it got buffed this patch. Two charges and it lasts up to 45 seconds now. Cannot be hidden is the only downside to it, but that's, you know, it's the closest you're going to get to a ward. Yeah, it's still pretty effective. CP continuing to be annoying with those Shadow Charge. Level 20 talents available for the side of Tornado as well. We have Hardened Shield on ETC, Bolt the Storm, but that's 5 ability on Valor. The standard Twilight Archon on LZ is not... Oh, yes, it might actually get popped. We have Valor trying to do her damage here, but needs to stay so far away, only able to really deal damage to CP there. We have Longboat Raid upgrade on the Vikings. LZ once again being focused, once again gets a conventional stiff. Zuda trying to push back the rest of the members of EG and he manages it. And now ZP is out of position on his own. Shrink Ray was used, but he's still able to escape. Zuda continuing to go back in. There's the Ragnarok upgrade. Still does a lot of damage despite its nerf in the most recent patch. And Tornado able to push back EG and defend their keep. It takes half its health worth of damage, but overall, still a really good fight for Team Tornado here. Still no kills. <laughs> Still no kills, but uh, I'd like to point out the talent, the level 20 talent taken by uh, by Ufa here. He's finally taken the redemption talent. First time I've seen it, which is when he dies, he returns with 50% health instead of his eternal devotion form. Yeah, it's the closest you're going to get to um, resurgence outside of Diablo these days. Uh, it's yep. Now, I mean, he, he dies, he becomes a ghost, he comes back, he can die again immediately and become a ghost oh. again. He lives on 141 health. It's gonna die. Bad Timmy coming in with the arcade dust. And that does take it out. ZP is going on to LZ again. And he does not care. Kemma coming in with the scrape. Mad Timmy being dropped very low. Stage dive coming in. Gonna try and catch someone out. Faye might be the target here. Mad Timmy is being chased down by Zuma. He heals himself. Faye is gonna bolt the storm away. Might actually survive. He's trying to sneak past the team, but he gets body boxed by his teammates there. Lightning Breath not able to pick off anyone in Tornado with their first kill on the board. And now Corfin is being chased down as well. But there's the sprint and the storm shield. They're gonna be able to escape but tornado they got a kill i i feel like this is the start of the comeback right here <laughs> first kill 21 minutes 40 something seconds into this game tornado they got to be feeling good about that i don't even think they lost a viking on they that didn't. as well they absolutely kept everyone alive they do they are missing two keeps and they've only taken down one fort but 
it's still not over. They are winning, or at least doing really well in these fights. It's not over yet. Zuna here to uh, want to solo the golem here. He has started it. His team is now joining him. They are doing it while Zagara is oh, dead. So Eric, 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 he's fine. <laughs> they are gonna. They, it looks like they're trying to do the golem and the tribute. They can send Eric just to grab the tribute on his own there. There we go. So they're going to get the Golem and the tribute here while EG are waiting for Zagara to respawn, but they don't realize that EG just does not care and is going for uh, the Tornado side Golem instead, which is going a for bit more dangerous due to the fact that, uh, yeah, the keep is gone and the core is on 66% health. We still have a full gate, full fort, another gate, and a keep for that bottom Golem to chew through. This top one, however, has full access to the 66% core. I don't know when that happened, but it's at 66%. It was uh, it was the bot lane during that last fight. Catapults. Oh right, yeah, we do not <laughs> have that. Is that's a this is stupid scary right oh, now. LZ, Nate, LZ. LZ. They gotta do this. They have to do this. What's LZ? LZ is a bit out of position here. They turn around, but in comes the stage time. They're going for it. Coming in from the back, ZP has been separated from the team. Lightning breath onto Caterpillar, but he does not care. He's charging through. Zuna coming in with the Ragnarok. Man, Timmy goes down. Corporal Block is going to join him. He gets a heal. He's trying to get out. Jada goes down. And that is two for zero at the moment in favor of Tornado. They're going to finally back up and start focusing on this Golem before it takes down the shield. And... That was another good fight. Tornado are winning these fights. Their Golem is currently pushing the bot lane. There are still two towers alive, so it's taking a lot of damage. And it looks like they're going to be able to kill off the Golem of EG before it... Nope, it does take down the shield thanks to those Stone Bros. And wow, that's a lot that's of damage on their right there, Yeah, They need a mule, and they don't have one. No, they need, they need this tribute. If they want to win, they, they need this tribute. We still got 30 yes. seconds on Jaina. 24 on the bright wing. This That'll could actually there. be the timing attack that we need because you can go straight down mid, get the keep, go right to core. And by then, I mean, this is do or die because we cannot let up any kind of pressure here. If Tornado slips up once, it's game for Oh them. my God, Corford being just a massive jerk, denying that, to denying that tribute twice. But here is the curse. However, Corford bought enough time for his team to basically all be alive. So Vikings, not currently with the rest of Tornado here. They need to wait for the Vikings, which means this this tribute, this curse currently, is being just run out. Tornado need to make the most of this, or they are just going to end up losing. They're heading to the mid lane. Looks like this is where they're going to make their stand. This is where they're going to make their assault. Down goes the fort. They need to get a good engagement. They've been winning the majority of these fights. All of the heroics are up. Zuna just going to kill off this hunter killer. Just fight it 1v1. Well, 1v3. Needs to be very careful though. They can't afford to lose anyone. This is do or die for Team Tornado. ETC gonna start split pushing because he's ETC. That's what he does. Zuda, once again, able to leap out, not lose anyone. And uh, Caterpillar gonna back up. He realizes he was a bit out of position, does not want to get caught up. I feel Tornado should stay a bit more grouped than they are. Because if one of them gets picked off, then that's pretty much game. They're trying to get a keep though. But Faye doing a really good job of defending here. Five seconds. Five seconds left on the curse, and they've only got one fort from this. They need to do something. Zuna taking down the wall so they have a bit more space to move. There's the stun, though. There's the leap, and that will keep him alive. CP's looking for a good shadow charge. Needs a good engagement, and Tornado just in such a tough position. They could have maybe got something, but EG so solid on the defense. In comes ZP's. He wants to end this here and now. Nice boat there. Out of Zuda, able to save Olaf there. ZP's being dropped low. ZP's is still going low. Down he goes. That is the first kill of the fight. Indra is on the run. Zuda doing so much damage with that Viking Lombo. Such a great job. I think he's lost one of his Vikings. Yes, he had. He has lost Eric in that fight. So it was one Viking for Diablo, but Diablo did just respawn, and that's going to be Tornado's cue to leave. Yeah, absolutely. You cannot overextend again oh, hang on. into that. Look at top. Yeah, I Look see Zuna top. going for it. <laughs> Zuna's going for it. He's going for Do it. it. One more. Come on. There we go. That's two. That's a keep. That is the first keep for Tornado of the game. We're going to see. Uh, we're going to see Olaf being oh, in oh, the oh, death oh. rush. That was very close. And Eric Baylor now being from where he was. Olaf is now alive. So all three Vikings are going to be together again. EG very much on the Tornado side of the map here. They want to steal as much as they can. In comes the stage dive. He's going to try and catch someone out. Through the cap does go over to EG. ZP has been trick sprayed. There goes Storm Shield. 
And wow, nice war there. In comes Kemba with the scrape. Doesn't actually hit anyone. Caterpillar able to escape. Nick also getting a shield. And he is able to get out as well. Somehow, Tornado all surviving this. Oh, yep, Dimensional Shift. LZ able to get out alive. It's now just Zuma, who's really far out on the map, just killing off this Bruise account. And somehow, Tornado are living through all this. Divine Shield, man. Divine Shield is an Divine amazing ability. Mother effing Shield, yeah. Um, that was just, again, like we bounce off each other. We have almost tied up kills at this point. We have so many Vikings in the bag that it's up to five and a quarter against the four. Here's the talents. I haven't shown them in a while because there's just been so much action now on the board, but zero, zero for tributes. I feel like Tornado, they're, they're hanging on by a thread, but if they do not contest, if they do not keep up this pressure, then one golem is all it is. All one golem is between them and Loth losing right now. What this is, is the slowest comeback of all time by Team Tornado. They went from having no kills to almost catching up. And now they're going for the tribute. And for the first time, we see EG playing far back. Zuda able to use Leap to try and escape. Zuda gets a heal. And Olaf able to survive once again. Shields, heals, and automobiles coming out of Team Tornado here. Able to keep Zuda alive. Brightwing being annoying. Pushing the top lane, trying to get some flip push done, but Caterpillar has bead back. He'll be able to clear this with his Echo Pedal, and that's what he has to do. There's four Catapults here, so he's going to have to deal with it. The rest of Team Tornado, they're hanging around this boss area. So is EG. I think they're going to try and look for a fight. Tornado can't really leave this, because if they lose this boss, they're going to be in some serious trouble. So they have to hang around, really. 200,000 siege damage and counting on, on Vala. 86,000 hero damage by the end of it all. The Vikings about 60 or so, <laughs> Uther about 10. Uh, we have some, some pretty interesting numbers as they vary uh, from lane to lane, but still, as I said, if Tornado lets up the pressure, if Tornado slips up once, this is, uh, it's donezo for them. They have to contest and keep contesting all of these objectives. They cannot get distracted by Brightwing's top. They cannot they get distracted by any kind damage. of lanes. They, they have to keep up the pressure. They've left the Bruiser Cap. They've they've left to go deal with the Bruiser Cap in mid lane and now they have to leave that to head down to this tribute. But while this tribute is spawning, the Golem is already on half health, but EG backing out as they realize that in they come. ETC with the stage dive and it looks like we're going to see Tornado try and steal the boss. Zuda going on to CPs here, trying to zone him out. The boss is so low. In comes the spray, but Kepler gets rooted down. Storm Shield has to drop lightning breath onto the Devouring Ball, but the ball may have just saved the lives Oh, but Tornado here. Nick gets stunned. He's going to go down to the Starfall. He is the first death in this fight. But Boss goes over to Tornado. And they're able to push back EG here. And in the meantime, Kemba is in the back line. Grabbing that tribute. Down goes to Rande. And that evens up the kill count. Uther respawned thanks to his uh, ben thanks to his redemption. Unfortunately, that doesn't appear to work with my current overlay. No, he still goes he's <laughs> dead. That is unfortunate. But that is a boss and the tribute going over to Tornado. They're still making a comeback and they're pushing in here with this boss. This could be the second keep of the game. It's already so low. This actually Valor could be a game. Push earlier. It right could here. be. They're pushing forwards. Fey is on the run, taking a bit of damage from LZ and Zuda. He's going to have to back out. She will escape LZ. Going to be using his dimensional shift to keep himself alive there. That's a big goal. They're pushing in. It's yeah. a very big goal. It's still at half health, but the shield is still 100% up. Oh, there's the strafe. And Kemba having to bolt out of there so his strafe will not do the full amount of damage sooner. Trying to take out. And he does take that down. Oh, match him. And Zagara. And this is going to be game. Tornado with the comeback. It's the century. Going to take this game. There's the ship. There's the Viking longboat. And that is Tornado moving on to the next round with an incredible comeback. I, don't I still think, hear the Viking song. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't think I've seen a closer game this early on in series before from the ESL Go For series. Because this is quarterfinals. That was a 31-minute game. And just it, it's very mind-boggling to think that with so much action, there was still only six recorded kills for Evil Geniuses <laughs> on the board. Yeah. How, how many of those were Vikings? Something like 18, 19? 16, 16, it was still four. My God. He didn't die since you last called it out. That's how incredible <laughs> Zuda was playing this. After those early pickups, he just played astoundingly and used the leap, used the Norse Force to great effect to keep himself alive. 
I mean, it looked very dire at one point there for Tornado. They were so far on the back end of things. Their core was at 46%. And if they did, if they let up once, if they got caught once, one golem was game. As we saw, the 30-minute golem basically marched through, got keep, afforded the team kills, and win the game immediately for Tornado. And they move on. As you said, that's just... it. It's mind-blowing that we had not only a game over 30 minutes here in the quarterfinals, but just the, the tenacity of them all was just outstanding. I'm just having a quick look at the stats here. Lost Vikings, 200k siege damage, 85k hero damage. That's more than everyone in the game except for Zagara, Jada, and Valor. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty effective that was amazing incredibly well played to tornado absolutely so uh that means we're going on to the semi-finals will we actually oops oh okay webcam's good cool awesome will we actually <laughs> continue on with tornado i'm not entirely too sure we're going to see what other games are available but four court tensor will return with the semis ladies and gentlemen uh perhaps our last match of the night i have to talk to our other streaming company out there we have some rules in place for finals we'll let you know at the end of the semis there but we will continue on at least for one board game for gesture and a tetcher here for the gopher heroes america's cup number 17 see you guys in a few minutes so you can process that game <laughs>